As soon as we get a nice 40 degree day where I can pull the boat out of the garage, we'll take the cover off and do a complete walkthrough. And today is finally that day. Let's go. I can't believe it's 55 degrees when this time a week ago it was 22 with six inches of snow on the ground. That's Indiana for you. So let's get the cover off. Take a look around. All right, now that we've rocked around the outside of the boat, let's do the very first that will be many, many years of memories and videos from the front platform of this low fishing machine. Except after this, you won't be seeing woods, you'll be seeing water. And if you're wondering why I'm not filming this on the water, it takes a lot to get the boat ready for the first time to actually get on the water. Registration, tags, stickers, license plates, all kinds of odd and ends, most of which I have on the way or sitting in a box. We'll get to working on that after this video. But this is the first opportunity we've had to get this fish machine out of the garage and enjoy this warmer weather. Here's hoping it's a sign of things to come. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the boat itself, why I went with this particular model, and then we'll do a walk around on the inside of this lovely vessel. It's a 16 foot nine deep V aluminum boat. So when you look at the model name, 1675, in this model you have two different versions, the 1675 and the 1625. Me, I wanted as much width as I could get, and I went with this particular length because, hey, it actually does everything that I'm going to want it to do. I've had a 16-foot low before, and I loved everything about it. Plus, it's easy to fit in my garage with my Harley-Davidson, my kayaks, and other odds and ends. And besides that, I just didn't need anything bigger. This will haul six people very easily and do everything I wanted to do. I got the wider model because fishing with Gramps, as the name implies, means I've got grandkids that are going to be in this boat with me. And that's why I go with the single console over the double console. I want room for little people to be able to maneuver around very easily inside the machine out here with me on the water. Now some might ask why a deep V versus a bass boat like the Stinger. As the name implies, fishing machine, it's meant to be in all kinds of water. Big lakes, small lakes, even ponds, rivers, some creeks. It's very versatile. I like the deep V because it's easy to blast across bigger bodies of water like Lake Monroe, Patoka, Bogs, but easy enough to get into smaller bodies of water as well. I like the V bottom style. It does everything I need. This is pretty much a family boat. Normally most bass boats, you fit a couple of people in them. This was a little bigger, a little wider, and designed to both be able to fish, and if you want, to ski out of. It's got the brace back there. I can just get the ski pole and drop it in and pull the kids out on the day on the water when they want to be on the inner tubes or one of those swimming mats. Makes it real nice and easy. But the vast majority of the time, the only people you're gonna see in this boat is me and my German Shepherd Gunner. My sons will be in and out for different adventures. Maybe some other local YouTubers will get out on the water with me. And when the time is right, you'll see the grand babes. But enough chit chat. Let's go ahead and continue the walkthrough and take a look around the inside of this vessel. All right, starting up front, our low fishing machine is powered by this 55 Minn Kota PD. This is a newer style than I'm used to seeing where it's actually got a different release to drop it down in the water. 
you hit that release right there pick it up and drop it down it doesn't have the pull cord like i'm used to whether or not i keep this one or move on to one of the others that has the pull rope we'll see just depends on how easy or not i get used to using this moving down from there you have the plug in for the trolling motor there's a little cubby engine trim up and trim down button we got room right here on the left and right in the future i'll probably add some little utility cups to put pliers and other things like that in We'll just see what we come up with. One thing I have researched on this trolling motor is it's got a little area that you can mount on, on the actual trolling motor itself. You can mount the iDrive and actually remote control the trolling motor, which might be handy down the road for launching or, or things like that since I'll be fishing solo with the dog so much. Up here you can see the battery charge left remaining on your trolling motor battery. Backing up we have wide spacious area for Gramps to sit and fish. This side is actually a live well but it does come with a plug so you can close it up and use it for front storage which is what I'm going to do. And on this side you have more tackle storage for your baits and bait bags we'll be filling that up with all the Guggen baits now one of the things they've done in this live well if you want to use it for tackle storage instead of as a live well this piece right here actually closes so even if you accidentally hit the live well button it won't let water pump into here so you can actually keep this as dry storage which is what i'm going to use it for there's a live well in the back but i won't be fishing many tournaments out of the boat unless it's a charity event or something i'm doing with my brother or one of my sons so not really a concern with me all right now up front i went ahead and put the seat pole in nice big comfy fishing chair which is where i'm going to be spending the majority of my time sitting down being comfy off to the right side a cup holder for the front deck and then this is the fuel tank holds 20 gallons gasoline gunner over out there enjoying the warmer weather off to the left side you have your plug for your built-in battery charger fish machine comes with two batteries one for the trolling motor one for the cranking battery moving on back to the rear Got a light over here for lighting up the deck if you need it for fishing at night. They call this a storage compartment, but there's not a whole lot of storage because that's where the trolling motor battery is. But you could put odds and ends down there if you wanted to. See the battery charger down there? Won't be much stuff going down in there. Maybe some odds and ends, emergency stuff. Maybe our flares whistle, things like that. Coming on back here, plenty of room for rods. Lay on the deck. I'll get a rod strap and stick it up there eventually. Oh yeah, one other thing that's new that they didn't have last time I had these is if you look at this crease right here, it's a, an accessory rail. Kind of like I have on my kayak where I can hang all of my yak attack and ram mounts and things like that. But you've actually got an accessory rail. So I'm assuming you can take a screwdriver and loosen that mooring cleat up and move it where you want it. But this means you can also put other rod holders, cup holders, and things like that. And these go all the way around. So that's another pretty cool and new feature from the last low that I had. All right. Then you got another seat here, which take it out, put it on one of the other poles, and that goes in the back. What are you doing, buddy? He's ready to go fishing. Yeah, you give it some time. You're going to be spending a lot of time in here with me. Has rod holders for six. That's the front. And then you have additional storage there in the bottom. And then this back here holds more of the rods. So for me, I don't have a ton of rods yet. But the cool thing is, that's got a key. It's lockable, so you can throw all your rods in there and lock them away if you stop somewhere a hotel or whatever and need to store your stuff overnight but for the most part i'll be going back and forth from here to wherever i'm fishing for the day and we'll just set my rods in the rod bag up on up on top of the deck hey what are you doing buddy you ready to go fishing aren't you yes yeah, so oh my all right let's swing on over and look at the console steering wheel got the accessory switches there you got a little pocket here for your phone and a little place to charge your phone that's kind of handy look at our gauges tell you how fast you're going what your trim is your fuel again like i said you've got a it's got a 20 gallon tank and then your rpms over there that'll all help us as we break the motor in switch down there so you can move the steering wheel up and down got your on off and your horn comes with the lawrence hook to i think 4x fish finder that's on there for now but 
I will either replace that one or add another. I've got two hummingbirds down there. One has got the side scan and the GPS. That's the one that'll go on the back. And then the front one is the Helix 5 down imaging that will go on the trolling motor. A lot of people wonder about what kind of different fish finders you can put on a boat. I use a side scan in the back so if I'm trolling around the water going slow, I can actually see the structures off to the side of the boat and decide to fish someplace and then use the down imaging one for finding those fish out in front of the boat. Now, if I was fishing tournaments and I had a big bass boat, yep, I would have the live scope, the 360, the panoptics and all of that, but I'm not gonna drop a minimum of $2,500 to do all that. I'll leave that for the pros. I still fish for fun and for me, I don't need to see the fish to catch them. I like using my skill experience and dumb luck to find the bass. Off to the side, our drive, throttle, trim up and down, kill switch which will attach to my life jacket behind that we have another little cubby for storing little odds and ends we'll see what we end up sticking where somebody's super excited and he doesn't know why but he doesn't realize at six months old how much of his time in his life he's gonna spend <laughs> <laughs> sitting in the back of this boat while we're out on the water but he'll learn all right so let's swing around and take a look at the back deck which is really kind of cool this is fishing mode so here you see the nice big deck plenty of room this is where my sons will spend a lot of their time or gunner might be up here later taking naps over here on the left side got another battery little bit of storage and then on this side you have a live well again we'll probably use for a lot of storage don't really plan on keeping many fish don't plan on fishing tournaments but hey good for either way if you want to fish a tournament there we go and here between the two hatches you see where the back seat goes so you can sit and fish and be comfortable and then you got a drink holder there and then one in each corner and why is that well because this back deck is a transformer check that out you want to be in family fish and ski mode? Boom, there it is. Two more cup holders. Two more little trays for your chips and candy bars and other such odds and ends. And then you got two more pop-up seats. Boom, just like that. And they got the old crap handles for when we're bouncing around, going at higher speed, and we're trying to keep people from falling out, which, you know, I won't be doing that with the little ones. But hey, they're there just in case they're needed. And then right here is where the ski pole goes. So I can drop a ski pole in there, hook an inner tube up on the back, and pull the grandkids around behind us in the water. So on days that we're not out fishing, we're just out on the water having fun, that it converts the fishing machine into the family machine. And we can go out and do what we want to do. But you got all your cup holders there. <laughs> cup holder off to the side plenty of cold beverages for all day long and that's the great thing about live wells you can plug them fill them up with ice you got some place to keep your drinks cold hi buddy i'm almost done i know and when you're done you just close them down strap them up grab the handle bring it back down and drop it back into place and there you go back to your fishing platform just like that i plan on making a lot of memories in this little low fishing machine if you're in a market for a boat and live in the midwest i highly recommend the boat place in rockville indiana the staff is super friendly knowledgeable courteous and made everything super easy they have some of the best techs around sales staff are completely awesome if you're a veteran low offers a veterans discount and again i can go on for days about how friendly and courteous the staff at the boat place was and that should explain why they are the number one low dealer in the entire united states if anything swing by and see if there's anything there you want tell them fishing with graham sent you if you wonder why i went with a low brand I've had a low before and it never failed me and was the perfect boat. It's a little more expensive than some, but the quality is just that much better, in my opinion. I have experience with it. My last low was 10 years old when I bought it and it still ran like a champ. That thing fired up and fished every time I wanted to go. And I fished out of it for another eight years before I sold it. So honestly, I plan on this boat lasting me for the rest of my life. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comment sections below. I'll answer anything I can. Enough chit chat for me. It's time to get the fish finders wired up, the stickers put on the boat, the license plate applied, and get ready to get outside and do it again. If you're brand new to fishing or have friends or family who you think might be interested in learning how to fish, go ahead and watch and then share the videos from this playlist. If you want to learn how to fish for largemouth bass, 
go ahead and watch this playlist. As always, get outside if you can. Make a memory. They last a lifetime. Mm.